on the Washington State University uh, Energy Program Energy Code website, there are a whole bunch of new tools that were created just for the 2018 Washington State Energy Code. Um, the first are these prescriptive path worksheets. Now, this is not entirely new. There's been some out there since the 2015 code, but they've updated them uh, to work for 2018, which is pretty darn terrific. Here's an example of the 2018 worksheet. And this right here is just looking at the table 406.3 and 406.2 credits. So looking at the fuel normalization credit and which extra measure credits. It's a great way you can do it um, on its own as an example worksheet or in the code compliance calculator, the C3 calculator. You can also do it within that and print just this form out. If you need this for compliance with the jurisdiction or if you want to include this in the scopes of works, for the majority of your trades. Either way, this is available, and on that WSU website is also the basic video on how to turn these into a printable feature. Um, speaking of the code compliance calculator, here it is again. And again, after this, we'll have a short video on kind of walking through at least the ventilation um, component of this, of, of how to use that. Um, because it is pretty neat. And again, the, the C3 or the Washington State Energy Code Code Compliance Calculator um, is pretty darn neat, pretty easy to use once you get used to it. And there's existing training videos available as well to help you learn to use this for more than just the ventilation component. Okay, we have talked already about how to do some of the basic math and calculations, but I know that's not everyone's favorite part of doing this. So we're going to show you a really cool tool available on the Washington State University Energy Program's Energy Code website. So here we are. Hopefully you're familiar with this website. Ton of great resources here to help you meet all the components of code. And we're going to focus on the Code Compliance Calculator. So we need to scroll down a bit. Uh, prescriptive worksheets, that's a good place to know. Um, a lot of good content here, but right below that is this, the Code Compliance Calculator. And this is where we're really going to feature. Now, if you haven't already um, played around with Code Compliance Calculator, I do recommend that you watch the introduction video and the Using the C3 to Print PDF Forms videos. Very, very helpful. They'll help you make the most of doing this. Instead, we're going to go ahead and click Read Me just so we can get a great idea of what's happening. Um, and what the Code Compliance Calculator can and cannot do. Um, and then we're going to actually download a version of the Code Compliance Calculator. In order to do that, we right-click this, click Open Link in New Tab, and in the bottom left-hand corner, um, a document has just popped up, an Excel spreadsheet um, for Windows that will allow us to do this. So with that, we're going to pause and we're going to jump over and take a look at using um, the Code Compliance Calculator itself. So now we're on the Code Compliance Calculator. We've opened it up. We went through um, enabling uh, the content and, and getting it all set up. Again, all of that is in the, the other video on how to use the Code Compliance Calculator. We're going to focus now on a couple of things, primarily making sure we have the right size home and then doing the ventilation calculation. So the first thing I look at is which pathway am I going to use? And we're using the prescriptive path. That is the most common way, and that's what most of you will be doing. Um, and we're making sure this is for single family homes and duplexes. Um, now you'll also notice the classification here, medium dwelling. I picked a home 2,222 square feet. Um, that seems, you know, fairly common average type home in the Pacific Northwest in Washington State. So we put that, but I'm going to scroll real quick and show you where I could make that change if I wanted to. So right here under thermal envelope details and proposed design, I could alter this. It's very important to make sure you've got this right because the ventilation rate required by the energy code in the mechanical code is based both on the number of bedrooms you have and the square footage of the home. So it's really important that we get this right. So now let's scroll down a little bit to, until we get to, I'm trying to not scroll too fast, um, to the ventilation requirements. So here I've made sure this is a three bedroom home. I could change that to four and that will change. Um, and then I have to look at the next three entries. And remember, anything in yellow is a place where you can make an entry. Anything in blue is showing you a result. So here, the first thing we're thinking about is 
how often is this going to run? Now, if you're just using an exhaust fan, um, if you've got a really high quality Energy Star exhaust fan that does not make a lot of noise, your best bet is probably just to let the thing run all the time. In fact, the number one way that ventilation systems fail are when people turn them off. So we'll talk about other things later, but you know, 100%, we'll, we'll show you what happens if we didn't do 100%. Um, as I hover over some pop-ups, so we'll, we'll come and explain a little bit more about the difference between a balanced system and a distributed system. But effectively, balanced means the same amount of air is being pushed into the house as being sucked out. And distributed means you're actually delivering this fresh air to all the livable spaces of the home. So based on that size house, 2,222 square feet and three bedrooms, if I used an exhaust fan and I let it run all the time, I would need 83 cubic feet per minute um, in order to achieve this. So maybe I purchase a 90 CFM exhaust fan and I let that thing run all the time. But what if I didn't want to run it all the time? What if I wanted to run it half the time? Um, this becomes a little pull down where it says 100% and I can switch it to 50%. Now take a look at that. Um, we're now being required to do 165 CFN. Now there's not a lot of really great single exhaust fans um, that are also Energy Star qualified and are low enough sewn rating, which is quiet enough, that 165 is going to be a good idea. So you could do that with two exhaust fans running um, at each at 50% of their time. That could get you there. Um, a different option would be, of course, to set this to run 66% of the time or 75% of the time. And you can see each time I made that change, our whole house mechanical ventilation rate changed. But let's put it back to 100. Again, that's going to be a pretty common way that a lot of builders do this. Now, one of the big benefits, should you make the decision to go to balanced ventilation, um, is you're going to reduce the total need of airflow. So I'm gonna switch this to balanced. Um, and now I went from 83 down to 69 CFM. I could make it even a lower ventilation rate if I also made sure that I was distributing the air everywhere. So this could be that scenario where I've got a pipe coming into the return side of my central air handler for my furnace or my heat pump, and I've got an exhaust fan paired to run at the same time. We call those interlocked, meaning the control keeps them both running at the same time. Look at this, we only now need 55 cubic feet per minute um, if we're running it continuously. So that's the very basics about using the C3 calculator. Each of those are critical. There are other ways to do this. You can do the math by hand, as we showed you earlier, but I find this to be a really clever way to do it. Don't forget to watch the short video on um, printing PDF forms as well. It's all part of making this work for yourself. There are also new um, compliance certificates available. Now, these are just the draft ones at the time that we were recording this, um, some of these were being finalized still. So by the time you're watching this, these will no longer likely have the draft watermark on them. But these are improved from the 2015 and include a little bit more information. And depending on your jurisdiction, some may require this, some may require something else, and some may not be sure what they require. This is a really good place to start but it, because it captures all the information that you need. Um, maybe more than some jurisdictions require, but once you get used to capturing this information, it's really easy to translate that to a specific jurisdiction's needs. In particular, it's got improved um, components um, for HVAC system leakage and building leakage. Again, that build tight, ventilate right is going to include this building leakage testing component. So there's a great way for you to track some of this here um, on this report, and I love that. It, it includes this new component of, do you have a copy of your test that includes a GPS and timestamp verification should your jurisdiction need it? Um, that is a really neat extra component and extra layer um, that's been thought of in the way we look at compliance here. And then there's also, part of this is chronicling how you did your ventilation strategy. So again, you can use the C3, the code compliance calculator. You can use the individual prescriptive worksheets, um, or you can use these um, effectively um, compliance certificates, right? Um, some of them are stickers that can be put onto the electric panel. Some are, can be printed in larger form and submitted with your, um, with your permitting um, or handed over before um, um, time of occupancy. 
And here's the more expanded version of um, the ventilation, which really includes almost all of the things that we've talked about today.